As we ponder the question of where exactly Atlantis existed, we can't help but consider one thing. The one thing that makes all this speculation possible and almost undoubtedly confirms that this ancient mystery was a very real place. That one thing being Plato, of course, and the very fact that Plato's reputation was faultless, his knowledge was not dreamt up, but researched in the ancient libraries of Egypt from ancient and now lost text. Plato describes Atlantis as the city of the gods. He describes shapes and dimensions. Why? Because he was describing something from which his eyes were gazing upon. He was looking at maps and terrain. He describes Atlantis because he studied the place. This is not the kind of utopia that was simply dreamed up. He had no course or cause to do this, and why would he risk his reputation and indeed his family's long history by dreaming up a myth? especially when all you had to do was visit the libraries of Egypt during this time to verify his accounts. And anyone could have done this, but no one says he is lying. You have to remember that for these people during this time on earth, that honor and truth were considered more valuable than the worth of your life. Plato notes during his research, this tale about Atlantis, though strange, is certainly true, having been attested by Solon, who was the wisest of the seven sages. Just wait. Till you hear this. It's the greatest mystery of our civilization. Where is Atlantis? What was it? And what happened to the inhabitants of this remarkably sought after place? Is it possible that we have not let go of the idea for Atlantis because within our consciousness, we are aware of an ancient past that our soul was once a part of? Atlantis has captivated the human imagination for hundreds of years now, a lost land that was once the epicenter of human culture and advanced technology for thousands of years was apparently swept away seemingly in an instant. This very thought intrigues our thoughts and we can't help but feel that this is because a connection exists. Our intuition tells us this. The Richat structure, for example, is a good candidate for the location of this place. But here's the stuff you don't know and we're going to enlighten you a little bit on that. Is the Richat man-made? It is interesting to note that if this is the location of Atlantis, then there must be evidence of a strong military presence since the Atlanteans had vast seafaring armies, right? And there is, in the form of stone spheres. These stone spheres are found in their thousands here and are solid evidence that there was a civilization present here that was prepared and ready for warfare. There are also stone needless to be found which suggest a high standard of workmanship and indeed sophistication in the detail of the type of work that this would have been for, as well as countless arrowheads that are dated to over 10,000 years old. The whole region is still abundant with artifacts of past civilizations, probably because of the remoteness of the location, but experts are beginning to realize that this is the location of one of the world's richest archaeological sites. But what happened to the buildings? Surely there would be remains here. Foundation stones? Something? Well, there is. They are everywhere. Stone blocks that have been apparently devastated by a sudden impact and displaced over the past 12,000 years or so. But the local people near the Richat still use these blocks for constructions today. Plato says the stone was quarried from the center island, and upon viewing satellite imagery, it is confirmed that a quarry or mine does indeed exist near the center of the Richat. The quarried stone was said by Plato to have been white, black, and red, and guess what? Yep, you guessed it guys, the entire place is surrounded by stone of this color. The entire structure is completely surrounded with endless heaps of loose stone. The debris of the Atlanteans. The eye of Africa matches Plato's description of Atlantis with such accuracies that you are hard pushed to not make the overwhelming connection here. Each culture has mythology of some kind or another because myth stems from legend and legend comes from history. There is truth to be found in the stories that are considered imaginative thinking. An example of this being the discovery of the city of Troy, which was considered to have existed only in Homer's imagination. That was until it was discovered and identified as Homer's description of Troy. In his case, history became a legend, and when there is no obvious reality left, then it fades to mythological status. 
What we are living in just now is one of these linkings of something we previously considered a myth. Well, now the Rich Hat and Atlantis are linked as legend. Can we historically make the connection? The most compelling evidence that this was the site of Atlantis is the size and shape of the Rich Hat. Plato's dimensions were extremely detailed, particularly the diameter of the outer wall and the size of the structure correspond seemingly accurately with Plato's descriptions. Plato states that the main city of Atlantis consists of concentric circles of water and land, and it is a fact that this is what the Rich Hat consists of. He states that the city is constructed with red, black, and white blocks, and it is a fact that this is the type of stone that exists within the Rich Hat. Plato describes the surrounding land of Atlantis being grazed by scores of elephants, and it is a fact that elephant remains are present at the site. Plato describes a source of fresh water near the center acropolis of Atlantis, and it is a fact that what has been found there is a deep well near the center, which is a source of fresh water. Plato describes Atlantis as being part of the Atlantis that is no longer accessible by ship, and the evidence shows that the Rich Hat would once have been much closer to the sea than it is today. The capital city of Atlantis was said to have been densely crowded, and the fact is that the staggering amount of artifacts suggests a once thriving civilization. Plato describes the area surrounding the capital city was sheltered from mountains from the north and open to the south, and the fact is that this is the exact layout of the Rich Hat. The main island of Atlantis was said to have been marked by a huge plain, and the fact is that an extensive plain hundreds of miles long exists before you arrive at the structure, and the plain was said to have been surrounded by mountains leading towards the sea. Again, the mountains do in fact lead to where the ocean would have been, the old ocean bed. It is incredible to note that Plato describes that Atlantis had an abundance of metals, including gold, and even to this day, the current export of this region is copper and gold. Crazy, right? The Great Eye of the Sahara is the closest structure we know about that resembles Plato's description of Atlantis. Every other site that has ever been proposed falls desperately short of evidence to back up the claims. At the Rich Hat structure, there is an absolute abundance of evidence to support the theory that Atlantis was at this location. In fact, we would need to be off our heads to ignore these findings. The main god of Atlantis was Poseidon, god of the sea as you may well know. And it is important to note that the local people of this region today worship deities that closely resemble how Poseidon is described, half man and half fish. Plato also describes Poseidon as having fallen in love with a human woman and having five sets of twins with her. Of the twins, the firstborn was Atlas, and of course, his name is still prominent in the region. The Atlas Mountains, for example, spanning Morocco, Tunisia, and Algeria, was named after the son of Poseidon, as well as the actual name of the city, Atlantis. And we should probably note that the area surrounding the Rich At has the highest number of twin births in the entire world per head of population. Is it plausible that this type of information that the local people that surround the Rich At structure possess today is the result of a previously advanced civilization and the passing down of knowledge? The evil eye or evil look is the look of an envious person who does not wish to see prosper and is happy to see you fail. To counter this evil look, a good luck charm in the shape of an eye is used. The evil eye today is dated to the ancient Egyptians. But even they say that much more ancient sources tell of this. It is very important to note that the charm in the shape of the eye is very similar to the description of Plato's Atlantis and indeed the Rich Hat when viewed from space. The belief in the evil eye is most prominent where the Rich Hat is located. Remember, this is the eye of the Sahara, but it only looks like an eye from space or high altitude. This belief has spread across the world. Atlantis would have been clearly recognizable from space as a structure closely resembling an eye. 
Is it just a coincidence that the eye is seen in symbolism all over the world? If a similar cataclysmic event happened today on the scale of what saw the collapse of Atlantis, then everything would be rendered useless. Everything. Society would collapse, technology would fail, and food would become scarce. Freshwater access would stop and disease would spread. Within a few generations, the survivors would be still trying to survive and buildings would crumble and fall. Concrete will disintegrate and even the strongest steel will erode through time. Within a few thousand years, all knowledge would be reduced to legend and surviving only in stories and indeed fading into myth. We will have to start over completely from scratch. As time passes, memories of our technologically advanced civilization will fade faster and the stories and myths will increasingly be considered the imagination of people who are unhappy with the present way of life and who are more comfortable dreaming up stories. Stories of our civilization would just be that, stories. And anyone believing the stories would be ridiculed as time passes new historical events of the surviving humans will be declared as history and this will be considered the real history of human civilization. The only proven history of the age, perhaps some ruins of a hydroelectric power plant would survive and our descendants will use it as a ceremonial place of worship where gods of a great empire once inhabited. Perhaps massive foundations would survive in which the origins would be puzzling and unimaginable. If there is a world that remains unexplored, it is the ancient history of man. We have signs hidden in the sands of the desert, smothered by jungle and swallowed under the waves of our oceans. And we have mythology, a time when the world was more beautiful, more dangerous and more mysterious than what we live in today. You guys can let us know what you think of this anyway. We'll be leaving the links to the sources of this video below, so please be sure to go and check that out. As always, thank you for watching. It's absolutely incredible because all you have to look, Atlantis is right here. Atlantis is right here.